I hate Batman. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what is everyone? Welcome to Nerd on the Podcast. You didn't need, you deserve. We're all levels of nerd oh, yeah. and criminal. Oh. Are welcome. Wow. Oh. I'm so happy. Uh, Thanks today, for including me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> today we cap off our Halloween season with crime. Ugh. Crime that will take place every holiday until next Halloween. The comic that was loosely the inspiration for The Dark Knight. Today, we're talking about Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's The Long Halloween. Ooh. Wait, are, are we going to go on a crime spree? Yes. Monthly? Yeah. Uh, no, mm-hmm. holiday. No, it's holiday. Holiday. Not monthly. Oh, holiday. But, oh, okay. Holiday crime. Close enough. Right. Holiday. Uh, right. Yeah. But before we get into that, my name's Corey. I'm Caitlin. Ali. And I'm Tom. And I'm Josh. <laughs> and this episode is brought to you in part by the members of the Nerd On Nation that is powered by Patreon. Patreon. The Nerd On Nation allows us to keep the lights on and bright and keep us growing, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And as a member of the Nerd On Nation, you do get fun rewards and perks and stuff like that, like bonus episodes and Discord server access and early access, all sorts of fun also, stuff. Also, you, hel- you help build us to our goals. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Nerd On Nation dreams. is growing, is growing. Um, but yeah, we also recently went through a revamp of our Patreon. But yes. Check that out. New tiers, Keeping it high new and goals, tight. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. And for as little as $1 to $5, all the way up to $8, <gasps> you can support us. And we appreciate it. Hardcore. A lot. Yeah, like but a yeah, whole lot. Yeah. So check that out. Nerdon.io backslash Patreon. Now, also, this episode is about a comic book. Yeah. And so <gasps> it is especially brought to you in part by our friends over at Comixology, mm. the internet's number one resource for comic books. Where's tis, the triangle? Tis. Ding! Like some of these. Um, Just digital. But yeah, check that out. It is nerdon.io backslash Comixology. <laughs> and a little of every sale goes to us. Ding. Yay! That is the business, and now the business of the show. Tom? Tom? Well, does Ollie want to put his headphones on or are we going to, nah. we don't have to. Okay. I was like waiting. You know what I was waiting for? I noticed this about like 30, about, about 60 seconds ago, but I was waiting for like something that would require your coverage so I could sneakily put it on, but now it's oh. been put on full blast. Yeah. So everybody can watch me. Now, now we're on the wide cam. Yeah. Hi everybody. Oh, I've got headphones on. Oh, there it is. Everyone at home listening in, you really should be Zoom watching Zoom in on these it. headphones. Yeah. <laughs> you really should be watching Check out the full episodes of the video version on YouTube. Yeah. Shut up, Caitlin. I'm doing Ding. the next segment. <laughs> wow. Uh, so this is uh, rude. one yeah. one book, one giant fucking nice. one book. Oh. Nice. Uh, Thirteen issues, but it is one full story. So, so what does that, that mean, means Tom? at the end of this episode, we're gonna rate it, <gasps> and that means right now is a perfect time for us to guess, guess that grump. No, wrong, Ollie. Why did you turn to Dragon Ball Z with that? I don't know. I wanted to overpower everyone. Jesus, cry me. He did. Uh, it, I think so far that's my favorite use of that, that was line. Pretty good. Uh, I was, <laughs> it was good. I'm going to zoom in real hardcore. Good. Uh, everyone at home, if this is the first time you're you watching. Put, like, lightning bolts around him. Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, if everyone at home, first time you're watching, first time you're listening, guess that grump is a segment of our show at this point where we're going to go around and guess who's going to have the lowest number out of one out of five, when one being the lowest, five being the highest. Uh, no matter how high, how low, you're the grump of the week. Uh, and since I always explain and never mess that up, I will say that. Uh, Josh will be the grump. Mm. Oh, wow! Wow! Grump. Every yeah, time every, if you hear, if you say Josh is part of the grump, he's going to say wow. So that's one for Josh. Caitlin is probably going to say it too because Caitlin. Josh, hey, Caitlin. Caitlin. Oh, okay, Caitlin's going to be the grump. Caitlin. Ali. Ali's going to be. So that's one for Josh, one for Caitlin, one for Ali. Ali. Caitlin. Caitlin. Going twice. Going twice. Sold. Tom. <laughs> Tom right, 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 right. Oh, so it's me. Uh, I will say. Not Corey, not Tom. Uh, let's even it out here with Josh. So, two for Josh, two for Caitlin, one for Ali. None for Tom. Tom? The Nerd on and then Nation. The Nerd on Nation votes for Caitlin. Yeah, they think it's me. None for Tom? None for Tom. What? For Tom. Why? I don't know. Really? Tom, maybe it's the Batman shirt. This guy likes Batman too. Know, to He's not wearing the Batman you shirt. You did hear him say it was loosely based. The Dark Knight was loosely based on this, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, wow. Maybe. Also, I still think you though. So there maybe, we are. Maybe it's that Ollie likes Batman. I am Batman. Oh my god! So, All right, I'm training to be Batman. Uh, so yeah, so there you have it. Those are our numbers. Everyone at home, please play along. Slip and slide in our DMs, especially slide. 
<laughs> what? No. no. Um, and what? let us know what you thought of the what? book, but also what you thought of who would have been the grunt, but also the numbers of what you thought of the book after you read it on Comicsology, the Neuron.io backslash Comicsology. <laughs> so now comes <laughs> the spoiler <laughs> section of Guess That Grunt. Yeah. Or, uh, and for those across the pond, you might call it first impressions, and over here we call it initial reactions. Yes. So, uh, Caitlin, go first. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I love things like this that are like long trailing stories that have to do with like holidays and you're like holidays. weaving in pre-existing characters into like this long overarching thing. So this was long like Halloween. Yeah. Something like that. Like 500 days of summer. <laughs> I haven't seen that. And I don't know if I want to. I don't feel like it's sad. Anyway, it's good. Uh, but yeah, I, I really liked how they, I like the, the, Criminal villains, criminals. Why did I say criminals? The villains that they chose the for the, <laughs> the holidays. The rogues gallery. Um, yeah. the, I was very invested in the story. Um, the the art was great, but really funny sometimes. Mm. Do you like his uh, like twelve thousand teeth that Joker had? Yeah. The twelve thousand teeth, and also one of the time where it's a uh, two faces uh, curly Falcone's, face. Uh, face was just like a giant block with teeny lips and big eyes. It's ah. great. I don't know why. I don't remember that one. But I I'm gonna look it up. Boy, I like took a picture of it to say. A <laughs> boy. Uh, guys, guys no. out there, she, I'm saving it for uh, myself. Kaylin is oh. single. If you have giant heads and tiny, tiny eyes, eyes, she tiny likes mouth. that. She hey. likes that. Oh damn. Uh, no, I, I thought it was great. Uh, they did a really good job, and I, I, this was a whodunit, and by the end, I was like, whodunit though. A lot, of, pe- a lot, a of, lot people of people have done, done it, it, apparently. Three. <laughs> a lot three, of exact, three exact people did yeah, it. Yeah, three peeps. exact people. So it, it was great. I think, I think it was a great story. Okay, right. cool. She, she doesn't like it. Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> I like the book. I did have a scene at home. What? English. I really, really loved, there loved. this Fuck. book. Yep, I'm um, guess wrong. <laughs> so did I. I will say right now that this is by far my favorite Batman comic book I that knew. I have read. I knew he was um, like it. I knew. Uh, back to front. It, it was one of those that, because when we were leading up to this, preparing for this episode, it was, we had to kind of keep each other on track because I think this is the longest holiday book that we holiday. have. Yeah. This is 350 long- pages. Yeah. Yeah. This is and, the longest um, Halloween. Yeah. It didn't feel like it to no. me. I just kept reading through it and I was like, oh, I, it's done. I feel like I finished I'm gonna read it faster again. Than yeah. Um, so I really dug it. I I don't know if I've mentioned it on this show, but Two Face is my favorite villain. You have. Um, and a great I really that. loved the story of the it there's a lot mm-hmm. and we're gonna talk about it. Ali? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you know, absolute this is my uh, absolute uh, Batman if you're watching the video version, um, that's on the desk here. And I'm is a thick ass. You know boy. I'm a huge Batman fan, and I, like this isn't just absolute Batman because it's the big version. I think this is like the absolute Batman like Story. comic as far as like if you if you are not if you want to get more into Batman if you want to learn more about, about the Batman world and like what the what the really interesting as far as I am considered what I think are the most interesting stories in the Batman world are all in this book. And as far as like the character cameos, how Batman deals with like different the different character the rogues, rogues gallery the different. Uh, people of the world, Commissioner Gordon, um, the mob, you know, all that stuff. And all of that is in here. This is a great, um, great step in, especially if you're a fan of the Noel movies. This is very much in that tone. Um, and I think people would really like it. I loved it. I bought this, I want to say like five to seven years ago or, or wherever. And it was, uh, I bought it half price because it was a little scuffed up at a uh, Comic-Con. I was gonna say nice. Yeah, kinda. yeah. This one because of this I'm little not, thing, like right here. I'm, yeah, like that thing. There's That's some. Enough. There's some on the actual book too, which is unfortunate. But because uh, I'm not, I'm not very good at collectibles. Uh, shout out to Dennis. Uh, he'll he'll be the first to tell you. Oh, but no. this Do one was not them? was not me. Well, they just get scuffed and I clam moved. chowder. I've all moved over. like every 15 months yeah. of my life. Uh, so yeah. it's like putting shit in boxes, and <laughs> it's never. I understand. Okay. If you're a collector, okay. moving yeah. a lot is not a good thing. No. No. Um. So. But I loved it. I mean, it's and I, and I read it again to kind of refresh myself uh, for this episode. And it's it's penultimate band, Batman. Like it's it's at its greatest. I chose poor Tom. Um, Sorry. Actually, I hadn't re- read this book um, in terms of like where my comic books reading habits started. It was actually pretty recent that I read this book. Um, I think I read it mainly because uh, it was one of those like top Batman books you should read. Right. Mm-hmm. And I read the digital first, and then I bought the the trade. This is my trade on top. Um, but yeah, I 
I liked it a lot, um, and mainly because I knew that this is what Christopher Nolan got inspired from or used loose adaptations from for Dark Knight. And you could definitely see it, and I think what I think— I the, believe in Harvey Dent. Yeah, I believe in Gotham. I, I believe, believe in Bruce Batman. I believe in Batman. Um, I think the great thing that the comic book achieves is it wrangles with like multifaceted uses of Batman. And I mm-hmm. think— I and I've I've said this kind of in my platform. I'll use it as a springboard. I always feel like there has never really been a good adaptation of Batman other than the animated series, because you have a character who is human, you know, you know, flesh and blood, but the pinnacle of human perfection. So he's like super smart, super strong. So he can fight with super, super rich, yeah, and so he can fight with like the super villains and like the super powered people. But also his stories are he's a detective, but also mm-hmm. they're more about the soul of of man and like the the shadow of the darkness of the heart and all that mm-hmm. stuff but also the, the 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 colorfulness of the villains that he has and the the conflicts that he has to surmount are really more um struggles of of morality not really like oh they kill everybody it's like yeah no people are going to die but it's more like we lost a good person and like yeah. that person has now succumbed to the insanity or the chaos that is Gotham yeah um, so like there's a lot of faceted things about Batman that like just one man can live within multiple worlds within the DC landscape. And I think this comic book really teeters on like showing that Gotham is one also grounded with crime, but also can go to that fantasy level with uh, the characters that they have, especially when they, you see like things that happen with Poison Ivy as well oh, as yeah. Solomon mm-hmm. Grundy. Um, and I love the inclusion of all of them as if like you already know them because I think that's the yeah. best way to learn about characters is that it's not... So kind just of throw be, you in the deep end. I think that's yeah. what I was. That's what I was gravitated towards most. Is is I'm I'm kind of tired out. I'm I'm burnt out on the origin stories. Like I want like this is a great time period for his like Batman career. It's a great point in it. Um, because it's like it's like you said. It's he he's wise and he's he's his his best version of his detective mm-hmm. self is is in this. Um, but and I'll, then but also right in the thick of his relationship with Selena Kyle like before she knows and or uh, Catwoman or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, also the thing about it, it's like they throw these characters at you and like there's no like in- explanation of these of these villains. There's no explanation of like what's a Solomon Grody? What's a what's a calendar man? What's yeah, a calendar man? Right. Like you get it yeah. in the frame. You get it with the dialogue. You don't have to. Uh, well, long ago, there there was when the I guy, was a boy and uh, <laughs> there were these rings that were made. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Corey. I love you. I, I, that's my that's my that's my thing with you. Corey, your turn. I hate Batman. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just because of that, I feel scorned. Uh, changing my score. Hell hath no fury as a Corey scorn. No, uh, Long Halloween is actually one that I've been meaning to read for quite some time. Uh, and I just kept getting these other trades either handed to me or borrowed or whatever it may be or reading other ones for the Shout show. Shout to Kyle Robinson. So I'm, I'm really glad that we finally got around to this uh, and spend some time with it. I really loved it. I... I I think the this might be one of my favorite Batman designs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've ever seen on the page. Very you like the long extra. broad shoulders. Yeah, uh, I thought the story watching Gotham change from a city run by uh, the mob to a city run by lunatics uh, was fascinating to me yeah. because I was telling Tom, I this feels like the most Batman the animated series thing I've ever read. <laughs> like this could be a spiritual. Very successor or, or prequel to the animated series because mm. everything I felt, not necessarily that it's in the same line, but it's how I felt while reading this was the same way I felt when I was a kid watching Batman the Animated Series. Mm. Um, I felt like you said they treated all the villains in a way that I, I mean, I know them, but I could comprehend if this was my first time, I could comprehend how they belong in this universe mm. and how they exist in this universe yeah. together. Um, so that, that it, it just felt really good. Yeah. Every page, even when the bad stuff was happening, you were like, okay, I like this. Where is this? What's going to happen next? Um, and, you know, trying to... The book asks you to be a detective with it, yeah. right? With Batman. Good which mysteries is, do. Which is really mm-hmm. cool. Um, as opposed to just showing Batman being a detective. It's it's asking you to fill in the blanks that he hasn't filled in yet. Yeah. And I love, um, like, the flashback moments where it's, like, like painting the picture of if this person yeah. could be the one that did it. And this is supposed to take place right after year one, which is another one of my favorite uh, stories. And I, in, in preparation for this episode, I watched the animated version that we talked about a little earlier. Um, and I feel like this, this does a really good job of showing Bruce slash Batman as, how did you phrase it, Tom? A uh, younger, but more experienced Batman. Uh, yeah, I said that. Yeah, which I, 
I was complimenting that. I was like, I think I think that's a, that hits yeah, the nail on the head. It's, yeah, those are words he said. Because I'm so used to watching the Batman that's been doing it for a while and is ready to give up the mantle or is tired of doing the same old things. Like yeah. Killing Joke is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And in that, it, it has the scene with Batman and Joker where he's like, we can't do this forever. Something's going to happen. Which I love. I love that Batman. But it's nice to see one who's still finding his his footing in a sense, mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes sense. M my mm -hmm. dream Batman to see would be a young Tim Drake, an adolescent Jason Todd, and then an adult N Nightwing. Yeah. So you get like the stages of parenthood. Yeah. yeah. But oh. with Robin. I dig that. Because it's like, it's oh. within, like, he's still young because he's not like married up with Selena Kyle and shit yeah. like that. He's not leading Just League, but he's at the point where like he's had protégés. And he knows, like, he's learning with each one. And it's like with kids, too. It's like, oh, the, the youngest one's going to be treated the best because we fucked with the first two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was, you know, it was also fun seeing the, the nods to Dark Knight in here. Or not nods to Dark Knight, but what Inspired. Dark Knight. What pulled from it. Yeah. From. So, like, the little things like I believe in Harvey Dent or mm -hmm. the battle for Gotham Soul and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Well, like, just like Harvey's Descent. Like, yeah. I feel also like the, it's pretty well yeah, captured. Very rooftop, similar. And this is, meeting. to be honest, yeah, I would have... Mm -hmm. My and this is this isn't my qualm, but my qualm with Dark Knight is I wanted more Two Face. Yeah, and like that's mm -hmm. it. I mean that in the best way. Like mm -hmm. I was fascinated. with And you could argue, like if you look at this as a uh, run, thirteen episode, if you if you look at it as one piece, there's also very little Two Face in it as well. Yeah, it's sort of funny enough. I think it's but there's more the Harvey. Same, there's more a lot more. So Harvey. the so the payoff Tons is bigger. More. The payoff is yeah, bigger. Um, more impactful. Which which I think I mean neither here nor there. Dark Knight. Could have or could not have benefited from that, but this is what I wanted. Right. Is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I would have wanted from. I, I would definitely fathom and pay good money to see Bruce Tim do an animated version, his style of God, this, yes. just as like oh, a one-off yeah. movie. Yep. That'd be pretty. Dope. Yeah, that would be but don't do awesome. to it what you did to Hush. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't him. That wasn't him. I know. What? I know. I'm just saying. Warner Brothers, oh. DC. Believe in your that, stories. That's that own animated universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're adapting it to the new 52 in a weird way. Yeah. yeah um, but anyway, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Uh, I, I liked it. Cool. <laughs> so uh, that brings us to our meat and potatoes. So we're going to do a little brief synopsis as well as the production of the, the thing. Who's doing the brief? Uh, Are you, me, you? Uh, you opened it, so I can. Yeah, go ahead then. Uh, actually, I'll jump in with you. Yeah, jump in with me because I don't think I, I have a good grasp on it sometimes. Uh, so, I mean, we start out with um, Bruce Wayne at a Falcone. Uh, birthday or wedding um a family event very much think godfather this His, is a perfect story yeah. of the godfather noir as well as heat yeah um yeah so, yeah so, it borrows heavily from godfather in the best way chris nolan's heat is yeah. all about heat so um we have bruce wayne who's meeting with falcone and we kind of see that there's tension between bruce wayne wanting to include the falcone family into bruce wayne dealings and this will be a theme throughout the rest of the the book, uh, 13 issues, is how does billionaire Bruce Wayne, who is in charge of one of the wealthiest and biggest companies of Gotham as well as the world, uh, balance being Bruce Wayne, having pressures from the police force to stop crime, be Batman, as well as the impending corruption that is the city of Gotham with their organized crime. Mm -hmm. um, from there, uh, we get a murder. Uh, the murder of Falcone's brother. VD. Yeah. Brother. No, not his brother, his nephew. His nephew. nephew. Uh, his, his sister's son. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of family members in here, uh, and there's a lot of Falcone family members that get shot up or come back from jail or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, a murder happens, and we start out with a little bit of a cat chase first yeah. with uh, Selena Kyle as well mm -hmm. as Bruce Wayne. And when does the first murder happen? Uh, on Valentine's Day. No. On Halloween. 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 <laughs> the long, long Halloween. Halloween. You got long it. Long Valentine's Halloween. Day. The, I mean, <laughs> did you just mention my life? Anyways. Yo, <laughs> uh, if there was a Harley Quinn ah. book called Long Valentine's Day, it was about... Anyway, go ahead. Very cool. Uh, so uh, we have this cat and mouse game, cat and bat game with Bruce Wayne uh, being more entangled into the the what, the whip that is uh, Catwoman and falling more in love, but also... Working with Harvey Dent and Gordon to try to figure out the murder first. Right. So they'll have they have a, a rooftop murder, a rooftop murder, rooftop meeting where they kind of discuss that they are all willing to do whatever and whatever and whenever it needs to uh, save Gotham and to bring justice to these people. And uh, all that they know is that whoever murdered this brother uh, used a gun that had their serial number filed off, uh, a, a bottle nipple on it so that it silencer. would silencer, and they would leave some kind of. Uh, Memorabilia. Memorabilia. From the holiday. 
like a submarine. Uh, Mr. Wayne, <laughs> Mr. Wayne. Uh, I was gonna say bats, <laughs> Lucius. I know, I know. Uh, so like on Halloween, pumpkin they would leave like a pumpkin, or they would leave like a, a, a witch hat or something like that. And so for or all, Valentine's chocolates yes. or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, so this will happen throughout the entire thing, but throughout this, all this is happening. Falcone, who actually plays a pretty prominent role, is getting pressure from Salvatore Moroni. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, another. Another, yeah, crime lord, uh, another family member, as as Godfather would have it. Maroney's number two. Yes, and the uh, they are trying to figure out who is who's the killer. Who and they the, now the news and the rest of the city have now dubbed this killer uh, the Holiday Killer, and they're killing people left and right all throughout the Falcone family. And uh, we don't know if it's Maroney's man or, and then at a certain point that. Harvey Dent starts thinking that Bruce Wayne might get involved with it because we start finding out that Thomas Wayne was in business with Falcone at a certain point. Uh, Not so much in business, but he did save save Falcone's life. life. Mm -hmm. Because he got attacked because his father, Thomas Wayne, was a doctor. Yeah. Capeless crusading ensues. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Caped crusading. Capeless is our other podcast. Well, at one point yeah. it is capeless crusading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right with the plane. Yeah. He gets eaten. With Joker. Yeah. Um, a lot of the rogues gallery gets uh, invoked. So we start yes. seeing people yeah. like Scarecrow, Poison Sol- Ivy. Solomon Grundy. Solomon, uh, Poison Ivy takes control of Bruce Wayne and he actually follows through with some of the deals that Falcone wanted because yep. Falcone hired her. And then the sister was not approving of that. We see Calendar Man. Uh, yeah. The Riddler. Who- got Riddler. Is jealous. Yes. You're because jealous. people are forgetting about Calendar Man yeah. for holiday. And there's this uh kind of same impending doom feel like we got with Dark Knight that the police force as well as Batman are not up to snuff to catch this holiday yeah. killer. So someone tried to blow up Harvey Dent's house. Or mm-hmm. someone did blow up yes. Harvey Dent's yeah. house and he dies, quote unquote. Uh, and then you find out he didn't die. And he's Him. he's he's doing an undercover sting with Batman and Gordon to try to figure out who it was, trying to infiltrate the family, all that kind of stuff. Uh, his lovely wife his Gilda wife is hurt. trying to uh, have keep, a babe. keep the marriage together, mm-hmm. and they have good heart to heart with uh, Barbara Gordon, yeah. uh, Jim Gordon's wife. Uh, one, so thing, one thing leads to another, and Harvey Dent convinces Maroney to go on trial and testify. Um, right before he goes into the court, Harvey Dent's assistant, who we're see, who we see meets with Maroney, I believe it is, mm-hmm. in the bar a few times, like kind of working with him, hands him a quote unquote uh, an acid. Um, to drink to for his ulcer, uh, turns out to be just acid. <laughs> yep, actually pro Oops. acid, not an acid, <laughs> just regular acid. And he throws it on Harvey Dent, uh, and on Harvey Dent face. disappears. Mm-hmm. No one knows where he went for months. Uh, and then one night on Halloween, I believe it is the next Halloween. Yeah, the next year, the next Halloween after all these people have been killed, Falcone, uh, his house is invaded by. Batman's rogues gallery led by Two-Face. Mm-hmm. Um, and Batman swings in. Batman swings in to mm. stop him. But you can't really stop him. Yeah. <laughs> it all turns into black and white because there's a little smoke grenade. Pretty dope. And then you just see the two gunshots fired and you see Two-Face over the dead body of uh, Carmine Falcone. Yep. And uh, at the very end, uh, not the very end, the end-ish, uh, we get to the rooftop again a year later from where we see Two-Face, Harvey Dent, Jim Gordon and Batman. And Batman, who thought it was Holiday, and we ended up finding out that it was actually Alberto. You mean thought it was... Uh, what it was the, ho- the Holiday Killer. Yeah. And then we find out it was actually Alberto Falcone, be- the son of Carmine Falcone, uh, because he was always pissed that Carmine Falcone never really gave a shit about him and even forgot what his birthday was, which is Valentine's Day. That's what mm. I remembered. Mm. Um, and, oh, that's uh, sweet. You remembered his birthday. Yeah, I did, because I'm a good father. <laughs> Piece of shit. Anyway, uh, but he uh, he's the one that was killing all these people. But we end up finding out that later on he stopped and then Two-Face became the holiday killer. Mm-hmm. And then he said there were two killers that night. And then we get Two-Face. He said like, hey, I was willing to do whatever it took to take him down. And this is what happened. And he turns himself in. He turns himself in. He gets it booked. And then uh, one of his last frames, he says, Gilda, his wife. And then we go to Gilda's house and we see her destroying all the evidence that points that they were actually working together. Because... She, they, didn't, they weren't working together. They were working, they were working she, separately yeah, together. Separately together. For the and same so cause. There were actually three holiday killers. Ooh. And uh, at the very end, we see uh, Alberto as well as Calendar Man, uh, two cells <laughs> right. across from each other. Technically, <laughs> that's in, only in the extended version. <gasps> it's cut from the oh, real what? version, which is what I had. I, I had to look weird. that up. Okay. Wow. So in the extended version, uh, like Lord of the Rings, the real version. 
uh, you get Alberto, who is the holiday killer, and Calendar Man, the Calendar Man. Uh, they're talking about Glass different cells, ho- yeah. talking about holidays and which Groundhog's holi- Day. Yeah, well, they're talking about different holidays of which one they would rather do crimes on, and that's how that ends. So it's kind of a fun, neurotic button. Tim Burton thing. Little but button. then also really ends with Batman on a rooftop, re uh, brooding. Uh, well, it's kind of like renewing his vows to save Gotham and saying, I must always continually to believe in Gotham. Does, I believe yours, in Batman. Did yours end with, I believe in Batman? Yeah. No. For, uh, oh. I can tell you what mine ended, ended with. I have it pulled up here as we were going through the... Uh, that was such a good closing point. <laughs> brief synopsis. And then it continues. Yeah, so it Batman's on the roof, and then it's Gilda, and then it's Gilda's whole thing, and that's where it ends, where she hmm. says, I believe in Harvey Dent. And that's, oh. that's where it ends. And then you have this whole breakdown of the Roman Empire. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. Fun. But the, the thing with Calendar Man was cut. Did you guys also have the scene where Falcone finds Alberto's body in the river? Yes. yes. That's also cut. Oh. That's what? also just, check it out. This is a sketch. It tells you it tells you about the things that they cut out of the book. Oh. And here's, the cal- uh, here's him crying in yeah, the field. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cut. And then here's the Calendar Man with Alberto. Oh, wow. It's all interesting. been cut. Your um, your absolute version has all everything, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, does yours? So my mine that we have on top here actually has a little excerpt from the beginning with uh, Chris Renault and David S. Goyer. I have that. Oh, really? Talk mine. Mm, I don't know. Depends I don't, when I you can't remember it. when mine was published. Uh, so mine, mine, mine has all that stuff. But anyway, that was good. That was like ten seconds. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good uh, synopsis. Now go to the production, Mr. Ali. DC Comics is the pu- <laughs> is the publisher. That's it. Is the publisher. Uh, Jeff Loeb, who does Batman: uh, Dark Victory, uh, Superman for All Seasons, Hush, which we've uh, which we've done. Look up that episode, definitely. Uh, writers uh, for Daredevil. Um, oh no! Uh, sorry, Continue. yeah, just the formatting is weird. Yeah. Uh, he's also done uh, Daredevil, Yellow, Spider-Man Blue, and Hulk Gray. Um, the lettering is done by Comic Craft, uh, who have done The Killing Joke, uh, Marvel uh, Comics, uh, Batman Hush, and then uh, Richard Stockings. Who's done Spider-Man Transformers? Founder of who's also the founder of Comic Craft. Uh, Artist is Tim Sale, who has done Year One, Captain America: White, Superman: Confidential. The colorists are Gregory Wright, Spider-Man, who's done Spider-Man: Deathlock and Silver Sable. The publication uh, date was December '96 through December '97. Thirteen issues, limited series, and that is that. It is now available in trade format. Yum. Yeah. Boop, and boop, also boop. on Comicsology. And on Comixology. There you go. The one on Comixology is the one code. I have, which doesn't have some of the Oh, that's interesting, because in I had... Oh. Maybe I got a different version or something like that. I think that. there's an ultimate one. Oh, yeah. You can get it on on that IO backslash Comixology. I'm broke. Ding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to get a Ding. triangle. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into the actual fun of the show. Let's, let's it, uh, well, Favorite parts. Oh, Ooh. man. Batman's cape. First of all, this is one of my <sighs> favorite designs. It has like a mind of its own, which mm. is beautiful, uh, and Catwoman's suit. I want to see an Catwoman animated. Suit. I want to see an animated Long Halloween with that Catwoman suit. I, I love thought it was the, the coolest thing. Catwoman the tail and the ears. Yeah, and she every was scene ripped. Every oh, scene that I want to be that Bow. ripped. Bow. <laughs> when you just I know. Yeah, that was funny. Love it. But I love that she was ripped. She, she had abs. She for was days not like, like some fluffy, curvy right. woman. She was like, I am ripped. Like so I believe her acrobatics. Just, just try. <laughs> me. I believe in acrobatics. I believe in Selena Kyle's acrobatics. Like. Look I, at that. Everything was so extra. Look. It's so good. Everything, colors, like... But it doesn't matter. It doesn't pecs matter. for days. Yeah. Muscle crevices for days. Just... But it's Everybody like is peak. Ears for days. Cape for days. But it's done, like... In teeth a for days. For days. Yeah. <laughs> way. Like, I'd say it's done fairly respectfully. No, I... That's the... Oh, yeah, no. That's the Tim Sale way. I also think this is the shortest penguin we've ever gotten. Was he, like, just shoe high? <laughs> yeah, he's literally standing on the desk in that scene. Oh, is he? Oh. And he's like, oh. he's like this tall. Nice. Oh my god. Yeah, so about two feet tall. Here, I'll show you on here. Uh, one of my favorite parts was at the beginning of the uh, when Selena Kyle walks in, and Batman is just about to leave, oh. and he says, um, "Suddenly leaving lost its urgency," mm. um, and I was like, "Yeah, yep. yeah." Just watching kind of the the cat and bat chase that was going. With them, the whole thing was was a lot of fun. It's and one it's, of my favorite, like through. It's one of my favorite, like side stories. Is the relationship between Batman and Catwoman and Selena Kyle and Bruce? Yeah, paralleled with that. Like whenever you use that, I'm 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 in. Have you have you seen the Bruce Tim animated The Chase? No, it's a musical number. All it is is music, and it's just them chasing each other through the night. And at the Sounds very fun. end, he like 
handcuffs her to a gate because he has to. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> wow. You, you would have watched it by now. Uh, so no, I didn't know it existed. <laughs> um, but I, and my favorite part, I think, um, it actually probably have to be the growing rage of Harvey Dent. Yeah. Mm. I liked where it was going because I mean like you you go into this like uh, he's Harvey Dent <laughs> not for long. <laughs> you know anytime you see, like he's a walking spoiler alert like yeah, the next yeah, Harvey is. Dent should he's be Sean Bean. Sean Bean I was going to say Batman next movies, what you need to do is Sean just Bean. Sean Bean and Matt Reeves Batman. All right? Yep. That's what it is. Um, but like it's like I don't know what's going to happen to him. Uh, <laughs> I, Sean Bean Two-Face I would actually be Totally, That'd that be would be great. You mean what happened to him in fucking Goldeneye? Yeah, <laughs> he almost died and come back. Uh, but yeah, so like, was it's he, like he didn't have a scarred face or something too, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so it's like seeing that, and it's like cool. And then, but then you get to be with him and see like how he's trying to hold it together. He can't be Batman, but you see like the mania kind of happening. But it's kind of funny because frustrations. I, I remember reading it, and I was just like, oh, he's a killer, because like you see him working on the workbench, and I'm like, oh, he's a killer. Yeah, it's right this, there. This, it's, like, it's like you're not gonna fool me with something like later yeah. on. You're not gonna hand wave this to me. I'm like, no, he's a killer. Well, if he's not the killer, I know he's a killer. Yeah. Um, I liked how he. You see him there, but also like, uh, you seeing him like with Gilda, as well as like seeing him meet the rest of the the rogues gallery, and like how he becomes the ringleader. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, one specific aspect of like uh, the way that they represented Harvey, and I think I sent you a. A screen um, grab, but it's the way that they obscure or split his face even before he's two face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's sometimes mm-hmm. that there's a frame where only half mm. of his face is in the frame. Yeah, or there the shadows would be going blocking, a, off. blocking off part of his face. Um, I just always thought it. And what's interesting, what I think is fun, is that the part that they always shadow is the part that's going to go become is going to become the two face part. Like it's his le- his looking. So his, his right, his his right side is the okay face. So he, they always block off his left, his mm-hmm. left. So it's always really neat to to see the, his left, his left. Also, so, his left. I just watched so, that episode on your of, left. They did the same thing. They do the same thing in Gotham, the show. Oh yeah, and it's not the same. Oh yeah, it's the wrong side. Oh, oh. whoops, Oopie. Just like Spider Man Far From Home, it's the wrong patch. Uh, <laughs> with Nick Fury. Uh, I, I I also I I really like. The camaraderie a little bit you see with Jim Gordon and Harvey Dent. Captain Gordon. Whatever the fuck. I said Jim. I know. I'm just saying in this one he's... <laughs> yeah. I wasn't arguing you. I was adding to it. It's no, I said Captain. we watch Hatefully together, okay? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> um, but no, uh, I liked that. But also I liked that Barbara and Gilda like had a thing. Mm-hmm. And they were connected. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, I, Barbara, like yeah. how she handled everything was great. I well, was just like, you're the best. Yeah, I really liked how, like, again, this kind of... Again, hold that drama of like these at the end of the day, these are just people. And yeah. there are all these like yeah. fantastic crimes going on, but the main crime that's happening is just organized murder. Or it's just a serial killer and it's organized crime. So it's a murder, killing people and organized crime. And then the fantastic stuff doesn't even happen until later on. Like that one big splash with fucking Scarecrow, which is kind of fucking dope. Um, but that doesn't happen until later on in the end. But it's like if you see that in a film, it's like you wouldn't be able well, to Well, funny that. enough, there's also like splash pages of just like Harvey like yelling at his wife mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like so that's what i appreciated like i appreciated that it was like the normal day-to-day stuff that was also like just as important mm-hmm. yeah i loved the two-page spread of all the all the villains mm. uh sitting in the dark oh in the desk uh, yeah, like, yeah i was like and what's interesting is like i have never read i haven't read a lot of batman comic books so there are some villains that i haven't been introduced to only in like Batman animated or okay. other things like even having the scarecrow represented on the page was was fun to see like I hadn't seen that sans an animated show of some sort oh really yeah oh so. cool oh in the Arkham games is great yeah I think oh, that's a really yeah, good Arkham, he's a huge depiction yeah. of that it. that two page spread for me yeah which one uh the two page spread when they're all like on the desk oh, and all stuff of them? being yeah. like Hi I wasn't there. sure if you're talking about the scarecrow or no no no, no. The, the the with Rogue's all the gallery. villains yeah villains um, all the villains. That was totally like the 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 portals, Avengers like portals coming through. I was like, oh fuck, no. yes, they're all here. My yeah. favorite favorite part of this whole book actually follows that page. Oh yeah, and it's when Batman's taking them down, reciting that, what his one dad. One of the parts I was gonna say, yeah, his dad used to say, he's like, of course he's talking about surgery, but same thing. 
this the precision and the yeah. accuracy. It's it was like, like make magic. a decision, and if you make a mistake, you, you live with that or whatever mm-hmm. it was. It was. I just thought that was that was really. Uh, I had never seen him rely on something his dad said in that sense hmm. beyond why do we fall uh but you know what i mean like it was such a specific part of his dad that he not even just like the memory of my dad it was like this is something he used to tell me and i apply it to what i do out here in gotham nightly do you remember mm-hmm. the the trailer for arkham knight no i don't it opens the up with the bat cave and you hear the words of thomas wayne he says you're gonna grow up you're gonna have a crazy life you're gonna go out partying you're gonna have all the like fun stuff. You're going to wear fancy clothes and do all this stuff. Wow. And it's all about him being Batman. Mm-hmm. So if you have a crazy night, he's like fighting villains. Like you're going to have crazy clothes. And then he's like, that's his new armor. And so it's that kind of thing where it's like that, I think is definitely taken from this because the long Halloween is definitely the quintessential book to take from, especially since it's also a sequel to year one, year one, um, which I think it, that's a good comic book for anyone at home that you could check out on comiXology. It's really good. And, the, and I would I would also say after you read year one, go watch the end. It's one of my favorite animated uh, versions of Batman as well. And what that story is, it chronicles uh, when Bruce Wayne comes back from his training and he's trying to build the persona of the bat mm. as well as Jim Gordon getting transferred from wherever police station he is to Gotham. And these two young, young men who want to change Gotham for the better, how they grow up. Uh-huh. Or how they become partners. Who they are. And like, it's re- there's a really good part where like Gordon has to save his kid. Ooh. Like, because his kid gets kidnapped and yeah. thrown off a bridge. <gasps> it's a baby. And it's like it's... really good. And so this story well takes over where it's like the trust between everyone's there. Yeah. Like, you have that trio. So it's like, yeah, they, they're, oh no, they're <laughs> going to fall apart and not trust each other. Yeah. Fellowship. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, there's also that really great scene where they're all in Jim Gordon's like office, office and they're all just trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah, and it's really cool because it's like it's a take on the cop drama. It's a take mm-hmm. on like yeah, you know, rolling up the sleeves, having the coffee late at night, and it's like, all right, how are we gonna how are we gonna get them? And uh, I I think it's that, but also just like wrapping it up with like how Selena like ends up saving Batman too, Bruce, mm. without knowing that he's Batman. Like, cause she's he's being mind controlled by poison ivy. I think that was great. I liked the depiction yeah. of her ivy. The oh, like yeah. taking, taking giant over, vine, the oh. green on his chest when she yeah. like when Catwoman rips the the shirt open and it's just like he's being taken over by vines. I thought that was an awesome. Depiction it's creepy. Yeah. Of terrifying. How, Super creepy. Absolutely terrifying. How ivy takes control is not just ju- not just something in the blood or in the veins or something. It's like a physical representation of her strangling. Well, like guy. the crazy, the cool thing I like about this him. is is the time that you spend. Like with the story, it's like uh-huh. a year. It's a full year, and you get to see it's like, whoa, he was taken over for a month. So mm-hmm. like, was he not Batman for a month? Was he like, so yeah, like, probably, yeah. The cool that that's what I liked about it is that it gives you like these little, almost like little vignettes, vignettes. into like what Batman does and how he goes about his like like the this Christmas. Is how episode. he makes coffee. This yeah. is how like the coffee. Christmas like the coffee. Christmas. Um, I think my favorite book is the Christmas one because Joker is one of my favorite villains and. And I loved the oh. plane scene and like the Grinch, the fact that he was ju- he he was like, "There's only room for one homicidal maniac in the city," and he's like, he's like, I don't like, like this I don't. holiday guy," and he's like, "I gotta I gotta go kill a bunch of people just so I can be like the best maniac for the city." Yeah, and he was like, "He could be there." Uh, so I'm like, "You really think you're gonna kill Holiday?" I mean, there's a good chance he's gonna be there at the tree yeah. lighting. So like, yes. Yeah. Uh, so so that's what I really liked is I, I like that issue a lot. I also forget I love when uh, Batman goes to find Riddler, and then Riddler <laughs> says like. What what time is it when Batman finds out your finds your secret hideout? Time to get a new hideout. Time to get a new yeah. hideout. <laughs> I was like, wow, and that's kind of the thing where it's when like, does ri- a serial killer not kill. I don't know. We'll that see. was April yeah. Fools. Yeah, that was the that's what he says when he's about to get shot, and then Holiday does. Oh, when he shoots all around him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like I, I I like that where it's kind of like you get to see the the animatedness of these characters where like Joker's like I gotta be the best killer. It's not even like it's a terrible thing again killing people, but it's like the Joker's like has that psychosis where he's like I have to be the best and Riddler is like a garbage comedian who just wants to be smart but he's actually not <laughs> sorry buddy yeah. so it's like it's fun so I like that a lot there's a I'm trying to find it here there's this one moment with Alfred that really like stung so we'll wait uh, jo- Josh go ahead I have a yeah, question I'll find it um, yeah. because I knew I had seen Solomon Grundy yeah born on a Monday I've never Experience, experience. He was I've a, only seen pictures. He like, was a mobster uh-huh. that was uh, murdered and then sent, and then like they tried to hide the body and threw him into the swamp, and then he got resurrected. 
And so he's this what? giant muscle. He's he, like, he's built like the Hulk. Yeah. And he pretty much like kind of could rival him in strength. Yeah. But like, he's, he's now he's closer tied to the mystical realm of DC. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's just in. I love that scene when um, Two Face, because he's now Two Face proper, uh, meets Solomon Grundy and yeah. finishes the rhyme mm-hmm. or finishes the poem. And like, well, it's they, like two it's monsters like, meeting. Yeah. It was just like, it was such a fun thing where it's like, it's almost like um, of mice and men. Yeah, where it's like and he finishes George the and rhyme and yeah. it calms him down. Completely. Yeah, George and Lenny a little bit. Yeah, and also when Batman brought him Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner. dinner. Yeah, yeah, because Batman's so a fucking good guy. He yeah. hurt him, and then he was all sad, like walking away. Batman Solomon didn't Grundy, like and then hurting him. Yeah, he was well, like my fight's not with him. Because Solomon, yeah. he, he was a muscle, right? He was yeah. a muscly. He was like the guy, like he's the bruiser. He's a brawler. You, you bring him in, right? And then he got murdered. And depending which where you read it, like it was terrible or it was like double cross or like it just happened. But like he is like literally a gentle giant in that sense. Where, like obviously, like someone could keep him in, and it's like I, I haven't fed him in days, and then just throw him in, and he'll like kill you and eat you. He's yeah. pretty much a zombie. Yeah, right. Right. A I mean, very he really nice, happy zombie. He always scared me. Um, but he he's a great character, and again, like watching him, he has a great arc in Just League Animated that Bruce Tim did. It's so Solomon good. Solomon Grundy. I don't has remember a it. Great arc. He helps them out. Oh, and then don't say it. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, saying it gets into Lovecraftian shit, and then he, he helps the heroes out. It's really fucking. I good. found the one I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big fan, and Tom knows this of any sort of like Batman, We're- Alfred, father son moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chill old white guy, right? Right, chill old white guy. <laughs> no, but I just it it there is that I love when they acknowledge the writers and the characters acknowledge that Alfred has been this like father to Bruce. He is dad. He is dad. He is dad. Uh, and it's the oh, scene where Bruce is know. wondering what would have happened if his father hadn't saved uh, the Roman's life, Falcone's life. Um, and Alfred's just kind of like, it is what it is. You know, that's it. It happened. It was your dad's way. He just wanted to help people. And then Bruce says, but I can't help but wonder what would have happened if, and Al- he leaves the room and Alfred by himself just says it would be as fruitless as my wondering if I had been a different sort of father to you, how better your life might be. Mm. And then that's the end of that mm. bit. And it just struck a chord with me. Uh, that shit, I just, I that love shit that gets shit. you. Yeah. Like, yeah, it does. That I, shit really gets you. It yeah. does get me, man. Me too. And there's that's like, uh, there's another one I was reading to Tom the other day. I forget what it's from, but in this one, uh, this one run Batman had, died or was going to die and he left Alfred this message and it was just like I just you know I I had a great dad and I've been lucky in life to have two great fathers so it, as much as it pains me to say goodbye I love you dad to Alfred and it's just like oh, this was that kind of I equivalent can't. to me in this and mm-hmm. so I had seen that before and then reading this having that moment was compounded yeah. and I, was I mean like, it crushed me in rises like yeah. when I happened. failed you yeah like no no like when they actually break up Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like that. Well, if scene. I told you, yeah, like that. <laughs> so if I told to have you, his day. <laughs> it was, she wrote a letter. <laughs> That's exactly what he Size said. Of attention. Um, uh, I also uh, loved the black and white murder scenes with oh, just yeah. the hint yeah. of color. Yeah, yeah. the red. Oh yeah. Well, because well, well, like everything's in color, and then suddenly when it's about to happen, yeah. the world loses color. Yeah. And then it's just Whatever either the, the blood and the memorabilia. Or the memory, yeah. Oh, it, I think it, that's such a good design. It hyper focuses you. It mm-hmm. hyper focuses you, but also it became like a point of the book that you were looking forward to. Yeah, You're like, like oh shit, here it well, comes. Well, makes you realize that it's like this. Interesting, like this isn't about all the action, even though there's plenty of action in there. Like it's more about the things that they choose to focus on is the character moments, is like the mystery, and that's what I really appreciated about it. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it kind of brings back again that noir feeling because it just makes you yes. feel like you're watching a black and white film. It's like, right. boom. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, we had to find out who killed this guy. Yeah. And then the mailman comes and it's like, hey, is, your, is the husband home? And I'm kidding, that's a porno. Uh, but uh, moving on, favorite characters? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Other than Batman? Other than Batman. Well, then I don't want to continue. No, okay, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> the Halloween. <laughs> the Halloween. Can uh, Two-Face be? Yeah. Two, yeah. I mean, it's Harvey a Dent. it's a Harvey Dent slash Two-Face thing. Selena mm-hmm. Kyle for me. Okay. Specifically Selena Kyle or Catwoman? Uh both. There you go. That's a good answer. <laughs> Actually the thing that I'm thinking about cuz it made me think of that Gilda is kind of a part of like the mm. more so like a honorable right. mention that's what I was trying oh, to say. Like, it was her it was just the watching mention. some of the scenes of her reacting to Harvey yeah. Dent 
it was, and then in the end, kind of the, it's kind of crazy. Like her ref, like yeah, how she was in it. I was like, wow. Yeah. Anyway. Are you just flipping pancakes? What are you doing? No, I'm Ollie? just doing what Josh is doing. He's like the, swimming with his hands. Oh. So <laughs> um, we're doing that too. My favorite character is Catwoman. Mm. Um, I'm shocked. Even if Batman, even if <laughs> Batman was allowed to be picked. <gasps> oh. Wow. I think she did. This is my this is one of my favorite versions of her. This is why I'm wearing the Batman. This is shirt. why I like Catwoman, is because of her like kind of cheeky like playfulness, but she doesn't. She has her claws, and like he can stop her. And her features are, you know, I'm a straight man. So look at those shoulders. You oh, thought, I thought I was zooming in. I on thought her you boobs. were zooming in on her boobs. And I, nope. Okay, I was getting ready for shoulders because you did zoom in. On her I boobs. aimed wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be fair, you were just like I would just go in with the narrative. At, that I thought you were <laughs> that's what I saw. But like now, there's a there's a shot that's actually probably my, one of my favorite panels. It's like Batman over. It's it's a shot oh, oh. from the back. Yeah, she she's like in in the foreground. She's in, in the, the background. Background. He's in the background. I want like I'm sure it's out there. I, I want to find a statue out of that. Oh, for mm. sure. Oh, that would be cool. That would be awesome. But you want it in this style, right? In, yeah, this yeah. this okay. exact thing. Just yeah. that for exact frame. Just give me a statue. Out. Alex Ross has a lot of those, and you can probably find them. But if you want, because I love, that. yeah, I love Corey the design of Batman. I was trying to find it. It's one of my favorite one? Batman designs, and one of my oh. and my favorite Catwoman design. So, um, like, yeah, it's this this frame. I want that. I wouldn't mind if she was a bit more like in a more playful like pose, but that's basically what that I would suit like. is so cool. I'm sorry, that's just like I love that. Yeah, bat, uh, the, that's a bodysuit. Suit. Both their suits. Yeah, that's a bodysuit. Well, I like so the gloves many. a lot. The long gloves and long boots are mm-hmm. really cool. Um, yeah. Tom, uh, for me, favorite character actually, you know, it's uh, Calendar Man. Really, I really liked him because he kind of threw a good wrench every once in a while. It's like you don't know if it's a he or she. And it's like, he just he with, would, them. Within the same sentence, he would be like, "Oh, I he's love, going to do this, but so she, she doesn't can. think it's, one." It's Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. yeah, and I really, really like those because it's like they have all the knowledge. They're the thing is they're trapped in four walls, and they're more free than they are. I just right, wrote a heart but, next to my honorable mention because it just says CM, but it's Calendar Man. <laughs> <laughs> Calendar Man. Yeah, I love that he yeah. didn't break him out. No, like, yeah, I, <laughs> it was so sad. But so he's I'm like, like, "Sorry." There's only room like, for one. And he's just like, what? He's just like looking, like, he's waiting, just like, like, hopefully. Damn it. Damn but it. also, like, I love it where it's like, yeah, it's like, you might want to check that date because I think something's going to happen. It's like, and I liked how he kind of became this, like, this kind of uh, an audience, like, laugh sign or an applause sign of kind of like telling them it's like, well, you're not going to figure this out soon. Like, yeah. you, you only have a few days left, and I don't mm-hmm. think you're going to get close. And it's like, fuck, it's impending doom that he kind of just put on them. It's like, yep. it's true, because he knows how this person thinks. Yeah. And that's like, again, it's fucking Hannibal Lecter. I don't know how else to say it. It's like, it's no, so good. That's a really great thing. Uh, my favorite, though, is Catwoman. Mm-hmm. So CW. Uh, Three CW? Yeah, I'm CM, you're CW? No, I mean, my, my honorable, honorable mention was Calendar Man. Uh, I loved his, his design. I loved his, any scene that he was in, I really good. was like super invested. Um, but this iteration of Catwoman is possibly one of my favorites I've she's read. She's just so yeah. cool. She's, she's so awesome. cool. She doesn't she give a fuck. Like, yeah, she no. does not give two fucks. She's just like, and her I'm just claw here. claw nails yeah. are, and are like, I'm give. just here to... <sighs> However, I I probably would have said Batman if I could have. Just because, like I said at the beginning, this is my favorite version I've read. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but that's... You know, that's my own baggage with it, where I'm yeah. just like, I was blown away by this iteration. I think I've seen like it was kind of like a, it, it was kind of like a she's she's due by me. You know, like, like sometimes it's like people are overdue for an Oscar kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, but this is also my favorite iteration of Catwoman. So like, yeah, but for me, it's too. like there's so many good versions of Batman where I was like, this is a standout performance that's for fair. Catwoman. That's fair. So, so I was like, I'll give you. That. I think she was good in in Hush. She was good in yeah. Hush. Um, but this is more of her. This is more yeah. true to her nature. In, at the end of she doesn't really play at the end of Hush. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked her showing up and him being like, "What are you doing here?" And she's like, "Eh." Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> if you if that, you like, that's the part of her that I like. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you definitely like, always there one. to season. And then she tries to save the daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say if, she's a good person. I mean, is, if you she like, just likes to seize her opportunities. <laughs> What'd you have to say, Tom? Nothing doesn't matter. If you like, if you like, <laughs> if you like, if you like, if you like, if you like Catwoman, actually, then you should definitely read some of the, the later Tom King stuff. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because it's about to finish and uh, she's pretty much saving the day. Oh, oh. shit. Dope. All her. Uh, is Tom King who did the run? wedding? Tom King is the, he's done everything okay. of Rebirth so far. Oh. All um, of Batman 1 through 80. Wow. Five. I dig it. So he's kind of a big Lord. deal. He's, everyone he's got, doing New Gods. Everyone got their favorite characters in? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so what does that bring us? Qualms. 
Quam, 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 quams. Go ahead, Josh. Josh. Start I us will off go first. Um, not enough because it, no, it's very tiny. Uh, it was the only qualm that I had was that there was kind of a logic thing of the three killers. That was the only thing that I was like, but how would the logistics of who? I mean, I they weren't working together. Yeah. But, if, but, but if, who, what if two who, of them did Thanksgiving or whatever? Yeah, it's like how. <laughs> what are the logistics? Like there wasn't like a holiday meeting or anything like that. It was a, just like it, little, just, it just worked out. They had a little Discord server <laughs> like we did. Oh my god, a little uh, group chat. Well, yeah, I know why like Gilda and Harvey. Uh, I know how they worked because she picked up on what he was doing, and mm-hmm. so she stepped back. Um, but for me, my qualm is pretty much the same. It doesn't have to do with the logic of it, but it has to do with the fact that having three. Uh, I feel Takes like away. took away from the Gilda thing at the end. Yeah. Took away from the gravitas yeah. of the fact um, that there was one. I could have, I put here, I said, diluted the reveal at the end. I think just Gilda and Harvey could have been stronger. Um, yeah. I didn't care about Alberto's. They didn't really do much with him yeah. to begin with. For Whole you to thing. Really and I get that he, care. he, you know. Uh, you under, you related why, smited. but, it, did, but yeah. it, do, it doesn't, it doesn't compel we you. We didn't spend enough time with, him. them to understand that his dad was that way so when right. the reveal came to me i was like oh there wasn't much of a like, well, impact it's actually pretty yeah. it's pretty detective tropey of the yeah. fact that like oh it's a family member for sure and yeah versus like this is more like versus the tragic story that we got with harvey versus the double twist of that also gilda was involved yeah and so it's like, like which one did you want to play more right and from what i maybe i read it wrong gilda was the first one mm. because she wanted to help have yeah. to have harvey stay home yeah so yeah. Harvey when did Alberto her. pick it up and when did Harvey pick it up? I thought it confusing started to me. Alberto, with Alberto. Yeah. I thought Alberto did the Valentine's Day because this is his birthday. He did Valentine's Day birthday. and then he did his he did his own, right? He did his own. Harvey, could survive a, I thought Harvey did because he was on the boat and that's why his hair was wet. That's well, right. You're right. Yeah. And that you're was right. so like it, that doesn't make sense either because how do you fake his own he didn't know he was going to get killed. Well, right. the only per- well that's why he that's why Alberto kills the uh the corner corner. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Hmm. Because I was I was so like I thought it was Alberto from the get-go cuz I'm like, "Oh, he's the scorn son. He's like mad." And then they showed me the body. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, well, which they didn't show him." Well, it was mind. mangled. Yeah, it was all like mangled, and he's like, "Oh, the seagulls have really." And I was like, "Oh, well, he's yeah. done then." Uh, that's they a thing. killed. Interesting. They killed apparently the only coroner in Gotham. Maybe that's yeah. why they took it out. Yeah, so that, <laughs> it would make more sense. It would make more sense. Um, I didn't think of that. I, I would say like, yeah, I definitely think like when you break down the brass tacks of it, the blueprint or the skeleton of it, it kind of like makes no sense. But I think what Loeb was trying to tell with the story is the fact that like, ev- the fact that there were three killers is worse than that there was just one person. Yeah. yeah. Is that the fact that like the rest of Gotham is capable? It's of the doing whole city. Three is people separately have villains. the same idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all had it for different intentions too. Yeah. And I dig that, but I just I wish I think the two could have been stronger saying the same thing that Gilda and Harvey were murderers. Yeah, like the two people you would never expect the the nice married couple who want to yeah. settle down, have kids. Mm-hmm. They're the ones going around killing mobsters. I think there's a like a subtle nuance in the fact that like one kills because he's mad at his dad. One kills because he wants, he thinks that's the right thing to do, and the other person kills because they want their husband, yeah, around. Sure, it's both. They're all different versions of it, and so I, I, I get with everyone that the qualm is, and I agree with it. Where it's like, yeah, it doesn't fucking make sense. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> when you kind of look at the, the, I guess the moral of the story, it's like, fuck, Gotham is fucked. Yeah, like people kill oh, for the worst reasons. I mean, here's the, the the thing that that drives the whole point home is, yeah, the mobsters might be done, but now you've got people like. Who are wise and like Ivy, Two Face, Joker, Two Face, Scarecrow. You know what I mean? These are all the people. Like, it, and it kind of reflects that same thing of in Dark Knight, where he was like, "Look, you you let the clown loose. Like, you're mm-hmm. the one who did this." And with h- hiring like Riddler and Poison Ivy and all that kind of stuff, they did the same thing. Is they've elevated them to this new level yeah. where yeah. they weren't weren't at before. Um, so I really I really dug that whole thing of like, what was the cost? Yeah, we got rid of the mobsters, but now we've brought this new wave of like insane crime to our city mm-hmm. that's beyond anything that mobsters could some do some people just want to kill yeah. just to be the best killer right yeah. so yeah. like what what was the what was the cost of that um, escalation and i i loved that because then that brings you to the gotham that you're familiar with as far as like the animated series where all these insane criminals are running around mm-hmm. yeah yeah the qualms i actually got a little confused with calendar man and holiday because i don't know why but they, they, their connotations kind of the same. Yeah, that's so, Calendar Man's whole thing. Is he's like, I don't like this 
guy girl because everyone's forgetting that that's my thing. Right. And I, I think I just kind of, I didn't, I've ne- I'd never heard of Calendar Man before this, right. so I had no like. So attachment. that's your fault. Uh huh. That's fine. <laughs> uh, but I'd never seen him before, so I I didn't know that it was like a normal thing. So I was like, oh, they're showing this character because they're more involved in the story than I think they are. But no, they're not. Okay, they're just mad that there's mm-hmm. someone like them just that's out there. Yeah. So it was. It, I just had a little bit of disconnect because I had no familiarity with it. it. Was like, oh, you're showing sure. me this character because it's gonna have a prominent role in the thing, and then it didn't, and I was like, oh. Well, it's I, I think in that same sense, uh, anyone else, if we just take the genre out of it, like if a detective was using, like if there's a serial killer who, who kills people with like bleach and they go to a cell and it's like, this guy kills people with bleach. It's like, oh, is that the guy? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you you brought it up. I mean, Hannibal Lecter is a really great example. I mean, except yeah. for <laughs> Calendar Man, it doesn't become as big of a part of the plot as Hannibal Lecter does, but it is kind of like he's a... Uh, He's an informant, kind of. Informant, yeah. Yeah, it was just another It's lead. like in Mindhunter when they go and talk to Ed Kemper mm-hmm. about yeah. these kill- the killers. He's yeah. like, yeah, he's, he just wants attention. I yeah. think maybe I just wanted a little more. Well, I think... Could've, he could have been from, more involved. I think yeah. him being more the, involved. In there the could have been like one of those di- those mental dialogue boxes where Batman's yeah. like, we got to go to somebody that... Da, 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 da. I will admit, in, yeah. in Arkham Asylum, it's one of my favorite uh, Easter, eggs. Easter eggs. When you go down. Finding, you find Calendar Man's cell and it's yeah. just got... Just all the pages. Ca- pages have you done the Easter egg where you set your clock to the date? No. If you go, I think it's Easter or you go to New, uh, New Year's Eve. If you go to the Calendar Man, like you get an achievement. Oh, oh. looks like I have something to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dumb. And I was like, oh, just change the fucking time. Manual thing. time. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to wait till Easter. Okay, good. There you go. Nice. Earn it. Um, yeah. Any other qualms? Um, I guess if I had to come up with a qualm, it would be. You don't have to. You could just like it. <laughs> well, uh, th- something that might affect the score <gasps> is um, as much as I love this book, it does give a very high level, almost like it's a little almost too fast paced in the sense that it has to get through a whole Break year. speed. It has to go like that that fast, and you don't get to um, you don't get to spend as much time with each like individual. Story it feels like a time facet. lapse, right? It feels like a time lapse, which is which is a pro in some senses. In some senses, but uh, in this case, I think it kind of it dances that a little bit. And it, I would have loved to be able to spend more time with each like little bit. You know? For the for the strengths yeah. and the weaknesses though of right. how fast it goes. Yeah. So that that's really the only thing that I that is of note. Yeah. I would say in that sense, it, it's understandable why Christopher Nolan adapted the way he did, because right. doing this as a fucking movie is kind of impossible, I think. Like, yeah, unless yeah. it's animated. Yeah. Or unless you're doing it like if it's Wolf of Wall Street where decades go by in like a montage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh my actual qualm is uh actually the art style. I, really? I was gonna say yeah. some of the villains that I was gonna add to so the end. The thing is, I like is that like Caitlin this is Tim up. Sale at his highest peak, where he can kind of do as much as he wants and go as zany as possible, but also kind of creepy and dark and evil looking and demonic. But for me, like some of it's kind of like it's like it's like Ugh, I just kind of don't like the look of it. You know, um, like I, I will I, be very bold and honest and say I don't like uh, Two Faces design. Really, hmm. I'll. I'll I'll agree. I mean, like, and uh, and I the brought, reveal. I was like, wow. I brought okay. it. I brought it up where it's like J- Jim Lee, his style. Like, it's hard lines. It looks like anime, and I fucking love it. Mm-hmm. Where this kind of looks closer to like Ed and Eddie, and it's not in a bad way, but it's more like the lines aren't super defined. You know, there's there's definitely great shapes, and there's definitely like great Riddler flow shots. Shots um, of the Riddler sometimes. Yeah, like, I mean, like a little too. Curvy and weird. The yeah, it's it gets a little. For me, it was Two Face and Joker that I, really stood out. Joker was you, a big one. You know what it looks like? It actually looks sometimes like the demonic things you see in Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, and it's a little oh, like too oh, much for yeah. me sometimes. Wow. And like okay. I, it's not like I'm like oh I fucking hate it, but it's like ah oh, I could have done without it. I understand where it's That's coming how from. It's not like a, it doesn't change the score for me. Yeah. Uh, uh just to kind of add to it, I mean it, it the Joker. Didn't really bother me. It was was her name Sophia, Gigante? Sophia. Yeah, the sister. Um, it was Sophia it was, Falcone. It was a stretch for me. Like it's like I, I I understand I'm reading a comic book and we're living in a world that there's some strangeness that goes on. But it was just the design of her character was just so big. I understand that she's a big, big person. Oh yeah. But it was like that's a thick ass girl. <laughs> well, there was that's some a huge. Bit. There was some. Fr- <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Did you say steak? Did you say steak? Um, <laughs> but there were just some frames that I was like, okay, that I that is the that stretches my 
my uh, yeah. imagination. Also, the one thing far. I'll say is that I don't. Mm-hmm. It's not the most. It's not the best. It's, like Batman and or Batman in motion hmm. that I've seen. Like the motion sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's it's hard to catch, and it can sometimes. Like it took me a while to like. Sometimes I would have to stare at a page and be like, okay, what's happening here? Because well, like the motion wasn't sold. I think I'm enough. only being so critical on the villain designs because mm-hmm. of how good Batman Everybody and Catwoman else. look. Yeah. That's, that's a good Everybody point. Everybody else. Uh, two uh, people. Yeah. I would say. I didn't say everyone else. Yeah, no, you I said everyone else. <laughs> I'm the one who messed up. <laughs> I, I would say it's actually like to me how I see like Tim Burton Batman where it's like it's wonderful in its realm that it lives in. And I yeah. think that's a right of its own. But like for me, it's like uh, I, I would prefer a different version. But of, like. The villains? Oh, no, the entire how things look. Oh, even Batman and Catwoman? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, there's some iconic stuff. Like, framing is not, that's not, to me, part of the art design. Like, character design is another thing. Right. And some of that stuff irritated me. But, like, the black and white sequences, like, the giant panels, I think these are great scenes. But it's it's actually just, like, how they are designed. The actually drawn. The actual design of them. And Thanks. it's like, uh, eh, like, I get it and I understand it. But I actually think this is a reason why I stayed away from this comic as long as I did. Because you saw some... Well, because, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of year one. I wasn't a big fan of this. I wasn't a big fan of how those any of those looked. Like, I had... I oh, I, got, I was given Hush first. Right. Yeah. And then I was oh, like, that's oh, tough. this is fucking masterpiece. And, and that's good. how everything should be. And I didn't get out of my own goddamn way and be like, oh, that other people draw too. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, let me read this. And I was like, let me see it. And I was like, oh, what oh, are they trying to draw. establish? Like, seeing Grant Morrison's Superman versus seeing how Jim Lee does Superman, it's like two different things. Grant Morrison doesn't draw it, but it's like the stories that he he writes, he like looks kind of dopey, but that's how he's kind of supposed to look. Like he's supposed to look like his old golden age look. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I get it. But it's like, doesn't mean I have to like it, but I understand mm. where it's coming from. Yeah. Um. So th- that's where that sense where it's like Hall- Long Halloween, it's so stylized. And I think it's like totally yeah. running in its lane. And I think it's a strength of it. But like for me, eh, it's not. Well, she like Catwoman has big ears. She has the tail. Mm-hmm. She don't always get. Um. That's what so, I'm yeah. saying. It's weird because, like, from from my experience, it's like those are some of my favorite character designs I've ever seen. But right. I don't just, like your character designs. Then you get to Joker. Well, I mean, that's the great thing like about the teeth. It's a great thing about comics. Is like, I actually is, really enjoyed so many the different teeth. Sure, designs and approaches, and each of them work for their own stories, and that's the beauty of it. So we get to some rating. Rating. Who yeah. has the least? So I that do. would be Tom. Cam. <laughs> Mine is a four point. And me. We both don't have. Go oh, ahead. fuck. Oh, four point seven. Oh. Solid 4.7. Okay. 4.8. Oh, okay. Mm. So oh, close. Again, my only next? change would be... Oh, I'm the last my one. Only, my only change would be... Uh, <laughs> what did you get? One? I don't know. Mine's a 4.8. That's okay. I wasn't... He wasn't talking. He wasn't talking done. at all. Oh, You I guys are you were... really great at that, by the way. <laughs> what were you saying? I was saying uh, the only reason it's not a five is because of the third killer. Um, it just really oh yeah. That so took away from if there was two, you'd be fine. I would because oh. like the the Gilda thing came in at the end, and I went. It was kind of already deflated for me, mm. and I think knowing myself, I would have loved that twist if it was Harvey. If I thought it was just Harvey, and then he said there were two, and then the Gilda thing came in mm-hmm. because I'd be like, oh shit, because we never knew his the only time that it's hinted that he was the killer. Like as soon as she said your hair is wet, I was like, oh he did it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I saw the. The nipple, and I was like, "Yeah, he's a kid." He's uh, a so, so for me, that was that twist would have hit home a little more, but it, yeah. it was kind of just kind of like lobbed over the plate. Like a three's a crowd at that point. Yeah, yeah. For, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? Whoa! For me, it's the art. art yeah, so, art art wow. Ourself does so, a lot for for comics. Ali, go ahead. Fair. So yeah, uh, now that is uh, <laughs> my turn. That's all I'm surprised. Uh, mine's a four point eight. Wow. wow. <laughs> So I was going to say, uh, um, so Arcel, uh, <laughs> it really, uh, no, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite, um, Batman books. Um, not my absolute favorite, but this is definitely up there. And, uh, of course my, one of my, my favorite movie of all time is based on this thing. So, well, we might get one this by thing? the time we record it, we might get another one that's closer based to it. That's Can't the rumor wait. is that oh. Matt Reeves will be based oh. off this. Oh, interesting. Let's, let's see it. That'd be I'm okay. Ready. I'm, I'm ready. Nice. Well, if it's a four point eight, then I don't know how good a movie. Just give me a Selena Kyle right off the bat, and we're good to go. But ripped. So I am Rachel Weiss. Yeah, you would be next. Uh, I will give this a four point eight. Oh Oh, shit. Um, The point two is only because. Oh shit. Sorry. Mine is it. It really is because of the three killer thing. I just there, there for me it was the logic of it that I couldn't. I I love the fact of Gilda being 
a part of it. Hell yeah. Um, but it really Fuck was yeah, just the wait. So now I've got to figure out like it was just a logic yeah. gap for me that but everything else I loved about it, it was just that story I, portion of I it. I almost fathom I like I would like it that it was just Gilda. She was the killer the entire time, but Harvey just became crazy. Well, each the thing is about it. Each one of them, I can go down their paths of, sure. I understand why you did this. But how they it all was, happened at the same fucking that time. That I was like, okay, that's a little like, this happened. I just want to know like, if like Gilda was like about to kill somebody and, and sees like a box of chocolates on the ground with the filed. And she's like, this is like oh, deflated. God damn it. All right. Go yeah. Back. So it was just like a, was there like a wink? Like what, how did that lie? Anyway. What? Kaylin. No. Kaylin. Was... I'm going to grump. Yeah. Four. Point seven. Oh shit! Oh wait, oh. I've had that in my head since the very beginning Dual of this. Dual grumps. So we are the holiday. We yes. are the holiday. Just See? kidding. Mine's a four point seven two. Three killers. <laughs> Good job, Alberto. You're the one that doesn't matter. Look at my arms. They're broken. Throw <laughs> your old member in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. uh, yeah. It, just a couple of the logic app things. Like Calendar Man, for some reason, was really didn't do anything for me, and uh, having. Three of killers was also kind of weird. Um, the art style was a annoyed a little. No, that's but my not qualm. That, you can't bring that up. That's fine. <laughs> I also have it. You so. can't agree <laughs> with me. No. Yeah, just just a couple of things it's that it, they just kind of built up enough, but it's still really good. Like I I really liked it. I liked how everything wove into each other and how they used all the villains and whatnot. So it was still really good. Nice. Well One might done. say it's 4.7 good. One might say it's Wait. might say it's 4.7 good. Okay. That's racist. All right, I know. <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone not in the UK. Or in, in, the, in the UK. In the UK. That was, that was fine. I, that feel was a fine I feel complete. I feel complete. We did it. We did it. <laughs> wow. Batman. I love that. That was a long Halloween. <laughs> that was a long. That was a fucking long The long longest Halloween. Halloween. Sometimes you just need one yeah. bad Halloween. The long defeat. <laughs> Um. Oh, anyway, like thank you. That is the introducing Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just saying. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. What, what Batman comics have we done? This one, Hush. Hush. Uh, that's it. That Hell it? yeah! <laughs> just we should okay. do that been joke. It. I feel like there was one more, but I guess that's not. we did. Well, Flashpoint had Batman in it. Joke, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what it was. Flashpoint had Batman in it. So that being said, had a Batman in it. Slip and slide into our DMs. Tell us what you thought of the Long Halloween. Wow. Also, tell us. You know, give us suggestions for comic books you would like us to cover, because we've got that tasty comicsology that we want to dip into some more. Sex Ding. criminals. That's a comic. Yeah, that's a fucking comic. Book. Fun. Oh. <laughs> uh, we do have some more comic books coming up in the future, spreading the love through all the different medias and genres and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Uh, yeah, tell us who you thought was the grump, what your number was, all of that fun stuff. Tell us if there's any other comics you'd like us to. Cover. Yeah, like I said about a minute ago. What do you want us cool to stuff. read? God. <laughs> <laughs> tell us. Just tell me. What do you want? God damn it. What do you want? I'll read it. What um, do you want? To, yeah. to polish this knob. Just make sure it has oh Batman in it. That's okay. All. Thank you so much for listening. I got to get out of this. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If you are new to Nerd On, check us out. NerdOn.tv. We have four different podcasts that we do. Good stuff. Uh, share us with your friends, your family. Stop by, rate, and review. Um, but I need to get Tom to stop stroking his microphone. So, so you, know, the you know the drill. As always, nerd, nerd on. on. He's still stroke on. Him. No. Broadcast.